Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Charting Your Career, Business Analyst to IT Leader. I'm your host, Mariah Weiss, and on behalf of IABA, thanks for joining us today. Today's webinar is a public event. It is designed to deliver practical resources for you as you continue to grow your skill set and deliver value within your organization. When you join IABA, you become a member of an international association dedicated to developing and promoting the business analysis profession. Your IIBA membership gives you access to a vibrant business analysis community and resources to support your development and career growth. IIBA is a not-for-profit professional association serving the growing field of business analysis, and our goal is to unite a community of professionals to create better business outcomes. As the global thought leader and voice of the business analysis community, IABA works to maintain global standards for the ongoing development of the practice and certifications. This webinar is brought to you by our IABA sponsor, the University of Wisconsin Extended Campus. The University of Wisconsin Extended Campus delivers online programs that focus on in-demand skills and needs within business, general education, healthcare, management, science, and technology. Their mission is to better students' education and careers, embodying the Wisconsin idea of extending high quality, professional, continuing, and lifelong learning to the people of Wisconsin and beyond. We thank the University of Wisconsin for supporting IABA and the business analysis community. I would also like to introduce our presenter from the University of Wisconsin Extended Campus, John Muraski. John is an assistant professor of information systems in the College of Business at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. John has over 20 years of industry and consulting experience before joining academia in the areas of project management, business analysis, and strategic planning. His research is motivated by his desire to pursue purposeful, engaged, value-added research contributing to practitioners, organizations, academics, and theory. Feel free to connect with John using his LinkedIn that he will post in the chat in a moment. So one note on housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A section in your webinar controls at the bottom of your Zoom window. This will just help us keep track of it and make sure we can get back to you if we don't have time for your question at the end of the section. Uh, without further ado, I'll hand this presentation off to John and Maureen, his colleague from the University of Wisconsin. All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that very kind introduction. <clears throat> and thank you to all of you for joining us from all over the world. I don't know whether to say good morning or good afternoon. It depends, I guess, on where you are, um, at what, what time it is at your part of the world. But from wherever you are joining us, I thank you very much for doing so. I am the program manager for the IT management program, which is one of the technology focused programs that is in the array that University of Wisconsin Extend Campus offers. This program is very relevant to business analysts and particularly in this setting as you are considering career options. So we are very, very excited to be partnering with IIBA on this exciting topic. As we move through the presentation, and this really is about your career and how you move forward depending on what options you choose, I would ask that you think about, um, as you consider your options, consider possibly a career in technology management. Business analysts are very well poised to move into true technology management types of roles because of the similarities of the two roles. Technology has become so much more of a strategic tool, a strategic asset in organizations than the back office tool that it has traditionally been. One of the unique challenges of IT management is the duality of the position in that it is both tactical and strategic. So as business analysts, you all have a very broad view into the organization and you also have to be both strategic and tactical as you use or prescribe various different tools to solve various different business problems. And that really is what this particular program is all about, is using technology as one of those tools to solve real business problems. So as you move forward through the presentation, you will understand John's very unique um, ability to speak to both of those worlds 
And if you have thoughts or ideas or questions about if this is the right program for you or if this is the right career path for you, how this program might help you to meet that, then we are here for you and um, answer any questions that you have. So I just encourage you to enjoy the presentation and learn a whole lot. Thanks a whole lot. Hi, everybody, and thank you for that introduction, um, Maureen and Mariah. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, from all over the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, we're going to talk today about uh, charting your career, business analyst to um, IT leader. I'm John Moraski, and so thanks for joining. Um, Maureen really touched on it. We are, you know, there is so much going on in the world right now. Technology has been just at the forefront of that. You know, if we really think about the last couple of years through the pandemic, we saw just the value of technology and the changes that technology has wrought on our organizations, mainly turns out we can all work remote. And that has just been eye opening and really placed uh, technology and business analysts and IT in general, front and center for organizations. This is a great time to chart your own career. It's also a great market. Um, there is great need for IT people. You're going to have a lot of opportunity um, to really take control of your career right now. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I want to start, um, and thanks again, we've got about 206 people from all over the world. Um, and so again, welcome everybody. Still folks are, are joining right now. 205, I just scared someone away. Uh, a little bit about my background, and it's not to share my background, which is, I guess, kind of interesting, but I want to highlight a couple of unique places throughout my career that I have actually charted my career, that I have made changes in direction very, very strategically in how I wanted to move my career into different directions. And you also have that opportunity. That's going to be really what we're talking about today. Um, most of this is off my LinkedIn. I dropped a note in there. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear your charting your career stories at some point as you as you go about this process, if you choose to. Um, a little bit about me. You know, my, my real focus is centered. What I do now is centered around my mission statement, which you'll see on the screen here. It is to engage, educate, and enable. And, and very simply, I, I'm, I'm a relatively engaging person. I'm a strong extrovert. Um, I, I like people. I like engaging with people. And so very obviously, engage is a, is a core component of mine. I hope I can, through my, my experience and my education, educate people. And then I hopefully will enable them to take action, to use that education. So through engagement, through the education, enable folks to move forward. Um, so if I look at my educational background, it turns out I have a political science undergraduate degree. Not all of us in IT, not all of us as business analysts went right into computer science or information systems or engineering. Um, I have a political science background. I focused on Eastern European Soviet politics, which is back in vogue, unfortunately. Um, so that's, that's my background education wise. Um, but since then, I've earned an uh, uh, MBA. I've earned a Master of Science in Information Technology. And uh, most recently, within the last three years or so, a, a doctorate in business. Um, so a doctorate in business administration. Um, and so experience-wise, I spent a decade um, at Schneider National, Schneider Logistics. And it's interesting, my, my first five years I spent in the business. I was, I was pretty good with the business, even with my political science undergraduate degree. Um, I spent five years in the business. I was really good with process. I was really good with people. Um, I was really good at making sure we had the right people on the bus. I was making sure we got certain people off the bus. Um, I was real good at eliminating my own job. And so I ended up with lots of different roles across the business organization for five years. About five years into my decade long career at Schneider, I got tapped on the shoulder and was asked to join the IS team. And it is now over the last 20 years, 15 years since that occurred, I've seen this happen again and again and again. Folks with good business skills getting tapped or wanting to move into the IS because they have an interest in process, they have an interest in technology, they're generally good with technology. And so I joined the IT team where I spent the second half of my career at Schneider the last five years um, focused on helping users solve the requirements, helping the organization achieve the results and helping the organization really exploit what they wanted to, to achieve. And so I took that experience. I finished up my first master's. I moved over to Associated Bank, which is a regional bank across the Midwest or the US and worked there for two years. I helped them implement their first ERP system across the organization. 
After that, I decided to start my own business. And so I spent five years um, running my own business. We had, um, I had a business partner. I had 30 full-time employees and consultants working all across the Midwest of the U.S. Um, on strategic problems, process, project, business analysis project. And so we help both individuals and organizations. We helped individuals um, learn how to manage projects. We helped organizations manage individual projects. More importantly, we helped organizations implement frameworks, project management frameworks, strategic planning frameworks, business analysis frameworks, process frameworks. And so really that framework experience um, that I had in my, my personal experience through my master's degree that I learned and was able to apply really set me up to start my own business. And so it was one of those where I took control of my career, charted my own career, and, and decided to start my own business. Um, after, after five years of that or so, I came up with my mission statement of engage, educate, and enable. And at that point, again, I decided to chart my career. Um, I left my business. Uh, my intent was to move into education. I took a couple of years as a, as a midlife retirement for two years and started teaching. And that was 12 years ago. And I've been full-time teaching for the last decade now. Um, since then, I've earned uh, another master's degree and then my doctorate just a couple of years ago. And I'm now a tenure track professor um, doing research really focused on, it's very similar to this topic. My research is focused on how do we grow the IT talent pool? We have such need for IT talent. How do we reach out to high school? How do we reach out to college? How do we get folks interested in information systems? And that's been the, the focus of, of my research. Um, again, our agenda for today, um, understanding the importance, role, and techniques of what you do, right? The business analysis role in your organization. So real quick, you know what you're doing. We're going to highlight it because it's important for the next couple of steps. We're going to spend some time taking stock in, in where you are and, and what you've accomplished and, and acknowledge that, that we've done great things in our career. And then we've got to look at how to optimize your skills to advance your career. And we'll spend a little time on that. Um, we'll talk about the BA role today and into the future. And then we'll talk about charting your next steps. And then we'll talk a little bit about the business analysis. We'll talk a little bit about the business, uh, the ITM, Information Technology Management Master's Degree Program. Um, this is not an infomercial for that. Um, not all roads lead to, you should do a master's degree. Um, I'm just a professor who teaches one of the courses and I'm real passionate about education, real passionate about helping people find their path wherever they are in their career. And yeah, uh, Jessica is spamming us with note-taking software, um, Mariah. So we need to we need to stop that or bounce that person. Thank you. Um, so uh, that's our agenda for today. Um, expectations. This is not BA training. Uh, this is not BA training. Um, we're not going to talk about how to be a better BA. Um, this is not passive. Now we're not doing breakout session and really cool, engaging stuff that I like to do. But it's not passive. I need you involved mentally. I need you involved um, in chat, um, and I'm keeping up with some of the chat. Um, I need you to, you know, set aside your, your, um, your email for a moment and take this as, as time to focus on yourself and your career, not just trying to learn a new technique you can apply, but this is time to think about your career and where do you want to go, the, the what do you want to do when you grow up moment, if you will. It's not an infomercial. Um, and, and yet, and there are no easy answers. The answer isn't 43 at the end of this, right? The answer is within you. And we're going to help giving you a path and a framework to think about how to chart your course moving forward. It is positive. This is meant to be very positive. This is going to really get you to think about all the great things you've done. It's going to get you to think about some of the great skills you have that you can build on. It's going to be contemplative. Um, and it's going to be a, a bit philosophical, though not, not too much. Um, so let's, let's jump right into the philosophical approach, right? Um, you know, we can do one of two things. We can focus on things that matter, or we can focus on things you can control. So we can choose to focus on things that are really important to us and that really matter, or we can choose to focus on things that you can control. And, and unfortunately, we don't always get a choice on this, right? We show up and we are given a project to work on. It may matter. It may be something I control. Um, we don't always have choice on that. But where we should focus is on things that matter and that we can control. 
And the philosophical aspect of this is in, in my reading over the last couple of years on philosophy, very minimal reading, not like I'm, I'm doing this all the time, um, but I've read a couple of books on philosophy. I'm very interested in stoicism. And really, no matter how many books, no matter how many um, podcasts I watch or listen to, no matter how many YouTube videos I watch on this, it comes down to a couple of simple things. You can't control what's happening around you. We can't control what's happening in our workforce great, a lot. We can't control what's happening geopolitically. We can't control what's happening in the economy. We can't control what our coworkers, what our spouse, partner, significant other is doing, kids, dog, cats. My cat's banging on the door right now. I can't control what that cat's doing. I can control my reaction to it. And that's a real philosophical moment to, to keep in mind that, and it's very, meant to be very positive, that not to get down that, oh my gosh, I can't control what's going on around me, but just to accept that I can't control what's going on around me. There's so much going on. What I can do is choose my reaction to it. And I choose to be positive. I choose to look at moving forward. I choose to be proactive and, and choose positive responses to that. Yeah, it doesn't always happen. I still get angry. I still say bad words, probably too much, but I'm trying to be positive and really trying to stay focused on controlling my reaction to situations. And that ties into what we're going to talk about here today. You can be in a job you love, you can be in a job you hate, and then everything in between. And you have an option right now to recognize that you can't necessarily control what's going on in that environment, but you can contr control, you can absolutely control charting your career. And that's what we're going to focus on today. So it turns out the IIBA has a career action guide that I'm going to somewhat center on this um, uh, discussion today. Uh, understand, evaluate. So understand the business, uh, um, the IIBA body of knowledge, the business competency model. Um, evaluate where you are on that model. Evaluate some of your skills and strengths and experiences. Plan your career and then act and then review. It, it's you know very simply a, a more elaborate version of plan, do, check. Plan, do, check is, is really what we're gonna be talking about today. So understand, evaluate where you are, plan, act, and then review. So the BA function today, um, many of you, this is, this is your job to some extent. This is very basically about the, the seven core processes uh, from the body of knowledge. And it's a various and, and multifaceted looped strategy analysis, elicitation, collaboration, requirements analysis, business analysis, funding and monitoring, requirements, life cycle management, solution evaluation, and then it's iterative and it starts in many different places. This is this is the process to some extent you follow every day. And one of the challenges we face is we have to bring the right amount of process, the right amount of framework based on our skill and experience and based on the organization maturity. If we work at a smaller organization or a moderate sized organization, it's very likely that that organization is not very mature in business analysis processes or project management processes. And so we bring a couple of tools, a couple of techniques, and, and we manage and lead and, and guide projects as a BA. Um, more elaborate organizations, more mature organizations are going to have you have to bring much more tools, techniques, really deal with the inputs, processes, and outputs of different process groups. So if we double click into these um, buttons, we get this eye chart and, and know there's not going to be a test later. Don't worry. Um, you can't even read it and that's okay. This is just a one, I love Googling images because you find such cool images on things. This is just an eye chart of all the things a BA does during their job. Um, th these are those seven steps we just talked about. These are the tools, the techniques, the inputs, the processes, the outputs, all the things that a BA does, all the amazing things that you do to some extent or another. And if you were to print this out and highlight what you actually do, you'll find out that you probably do quite a few of these, probably do quite a few of these things. And that's, that's really neat. I like to boil those up into a few skills, what I like to think of as, as BA skills that you probably have to some extent. Am I missing any here? So take a look through this, you know, communication skills, negotiation, problem solving, critical thinking, analytical methodology skills. List a lot of different skills here that you have to some extent. If you see any I'm not covering here, drop them into the chat. Love to, love to hear from you on some skills maybe I don't, uh, don't have listed here. 
these are skills we have to various extent. We may be really good at some of these skills. We may have just no experience with some of them. We may um, want to grow some of those skills. And, you know, I, I really want to focus on, on your thoughts on that a little bit. I think I, I still hear students, I still hear professionals that I work with talk about, well, here's a weakness I have, and I, I really need to work on that. I want to focus us on think about the strengths you have and how do you really grow those and maximize those look at areas that maybe you haven't had experience in and how can you gain experience in those skills. Um, this is, uh, you know, so, so think about those skills. Think about what you EQ is a great, uh, a great skill. Um, that's a good thank you. Think about skills you're strong at and want to accentuate and, and focus on. Think about skills you don't have any experience with, and how do you how do you grow those skills? How can you grow those skills? So understanding where you are and what you have accomplished. Um, again, we think about that understand, evaluate, plan, act, review. And so this is the evaluate portion, right? I want you to take a moment again, put your put your inbox aside and um, eat your breakfast, lunch, dinner, and uh, take stock of where you are and what you've accomplished. Um, you all have some education that you've completed. Maybe it's a, a two-year degree. Um, maybe it's a, it's a bachelor's degree, a four-year degree. Maybe it's a master's degree. You've had some level of um, ed education that you've uh, achieved. You've had more than one role, probably. You've had one or more roles. Think about some of those roles. You know, if you go into your LinkedIn profile, are you seeing what you really delivered in those roles? Are you seeing your skills and strengths and accomplishments and contributions to the organization? Is that highlighting on your resume? Is it highlighting in LinkedIn? Think about the projects you've worked on. Think about all the great things that you've learned from your projects. Not all of them have been successful. We've all get those learning opportunities, those horrible projects where we learn the most. We've all had great successful projects where we've also learned. Think about those projects. Think about the things you've learned, the roles you've been in, the projects you've worked on. Think about professional development that you've done. Think about conferences you've attended. Remember before um, the pandemic, we went to conferences. Um, so think about your professional development. Think about the conferences you've attended. You've done some amazing things. And if you haven't, it's time to go ask for some funding to go to a conference and, and to move beyond just webinars and, and Zoominars, which are great, but to get out and network and meet people and, and look at growing some of your skills. But take stock in the things that you've done and recognize and congratulate yourself on the wonderful things that, um, that you've done. So let's optimize our skills to advance our career. Think about planning, really moving into that planning. We think about those skills that we've had, all those skills we've had, including EQ and a couple others that were typed in. And stop and think about the, um, how do I add value to an organization, right? Because I, I have skills, I have experiences, I have projects I've been on. I'm focusing on, on my response to the world and how I can control that. And I started thinking about what are some ways that we can add value to the organization. And again, a quick Google search, I, I found some, some great examples here to think about from enhancing organizational performance with new technology adoption, right? Isn't that the biggest thing we've been doing? Um, how do we take 100% of our workplace and make them remote? How do, we, how do we do that, right? That's been a BA um, calling and, and solution. Um, looking at cost reduction through automation. You know, let's face it, um, over the next couple of years, we're facing worker shortages. We have to have automation, absolutely has to have some automation um, to deal with the worker shortage of folks not wanting to work full time, folks deciding to retire, um, honestly, just more jobs than we have people for them because of changing demographics. Um, enhance customer satisfaction, right? That's a way of, of really contributing and adding value to your organization. Um, saving organizational resources through requirements reuse, reuse, being more efficient in the BA process, protecting 
solutions from malicious elements, right? We're seeing cybersecurity threats and cybersecurity being baked in to everything that we are doing right now. We're going to be asked to improve top line growth, right? Even, even our nonprofit or not-for-profit organizations, while we don't necessarily need to make, um, you know, huge revenue for our, our investors, we still need to generate revenue for our operation. So improving top line growth via the technology, delivering business value, very important. Saving organizational resources through requirements validation, right? Ensuring we're validating requirements and not wasting resources by implementing requirements that can't be met. Delivering projects on time. Um, enhancing probability of solution success. These are all things we can do. And if you look back at your projects, they probably fit into words similar to this. And so thinking about your experience, thinking about where you've been, um, thinking about um, where you've, you know, if you check boxed on here and the presentation we've made available and will again at the end of the of our presentation, uh, the PDF will be made available to you, you know, go through here and say, okay, I've had a project that did that. I've had a project, you know, these three or four, I haven't had projects that have done anything in that, in that space. And look for projects, seek out projects that maybe meet some of these requirements. Talk to your leader about how you can get some experience in these projects. Look at volunteer organizations where you can go work, or volunteer your efforts to work on projects to help nonprofits or not-for-profit organizations through volunteer work. Lots of ways to build your experience, lots of ways to build your resume, lots of ways to build up your confidence to help you chart your career moving forward. Getting removing from the plan to the act now. Um, Mariah, have I missed any questions I should be responding to at this point? We'll come back to the Q&A at the end of the session, unless you would like to cover some questions right now. Just anything that was germane to what we talked about would be fine? Um, no, we're okay for now. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, as we look at the BA role today and moving into the future, these are all the hot technologies that I could think of when I looked up, you know, CIO.com and, and what those articles are talking about. What are CIOs talking about? What they need to do with their business moving forward? Business intelligence, machine learning, AI, cloud, software as a service, cybersecurity, data analytics, business process management, product management, agile, UX customer experience, design thinking. Boy, we could, we could focus our careers in any one of these things. And this is part of that charting your career, right? You may want to go down one of these rabbit holes and become an expert in AI or an expert in data analytics or business process management and some of the software there. Um, you certainly can do that. That's part of taking ownership of your, of your own career and looking at how you want to move forward. Um, these are all different new, hot, sexy technologies that exist. And as a BA, our job is to have an understanding of them all, have a, um, a, 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 an overview of each, and be able to talk about each of these without necessarily being an expert. And if you want to be an expert in it, that's certainly an area you can, you can pursue. Now, the IIBA also has a career paths chart and document that I think is just um, amazing. Um, and I, I really have used this since I found it a while back. On here are a number of different career paths you can consider. Some are more technical focused, some are more business focused. Um, clearly you can go down a more technical path or business focused path. Um, these are intermittent steps and um, kind of the, the path you head down to help you think about stepping out of what you're currently doing, right? It's very easy to sit in the box that we're in right now. Um, I'm only doing cybersecurity, business analysis, and what I really want to do is other things. I don't know what those other things are because I'm so busy in the weeds right now. This is, again, an opportunity to, to take stock in what you've done, to take stock in your skills, to take stock in your experiences, to look at where can I grow those skills and experience? So, so where do I want to move forward in my career? And these are some possible career paths to consider. So charting next steps to take control of your career. Again, we're moving from plan into act. As we take stock of our education, as we think about our roles, projects, 
as we think about our professional development, our training, and again, maybe go get some more money for training, as we think about our LinkedIn and resume and getting those things updated, really take stock of where you are, what you've done. And just like a BA, look at where your gaps are. Look at where your opportunities are. Look at where your strengths are that you want to move forward with. This is something you can take time to do. Think about all these skill sets and check the ones you feel comfortable with. Check the ones you'd, you'd like to work on. Take time to go through that. You may choose that you want to move forward in some type of certification. Um, IIBA offers a number of certifications, and I see some folks on here have those certifications, um, but there are a number of different certifications that uh, are available through IIBA for any level of experience. If you're a relatively new person in a BA role through some, uh, some courses and training, you can earn an introductory BA certification all the way up to very advanced, very technical certifications are available now. I really encourage you to look at the um, certification page on the IIBA and look at, look at some different certifications you can start putting um, behind your name. There's great value in an IIBA certification. Um, higher confidence at work, oftentimes a salary increase, the ability to move into different roles in your organizations, and even outside of your organization, i.e. move into a different, a different role. Um, and greater fulfillment. You know, I earned my PMP from the project management, because I, I mostly do project management in my professional life. Um, but I earned that PMP, and that's a designation I still carry. Uh, it's Dr. John Moraski, DBA, comma, PMP. Um, that was a certification I'm very proud of. Um, certified business analyst professionals report higher career satisfaction, 45% higher uh, by once you earn that certification. So, whoa, someone earned a CBAP this morning. And now folks are typing in their initials. Please type in the credentials if you have any IIBA related type of credentials. Love seeing those. That's outstanding. Oh, wonderful. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, everybody. So again, the, the focus of this is to encourage you to chart your own career, to encourage you to choose your reaction to what's happening in the world today by choosing your path forward. And that can include things such as an IIB, IIBA certification. It can include things such as seeking out different types of projects to grow your skills that you in an area that you want to grow. It may ask that you seek out a, um, a new project that provides some other um, benefit to the organization. Again, going through the slide deck will give you just some things to think about as you chart your career, as you chart your plan forward. Um, again, if you have specific questions, drop them into the Q&A. Um, general comments can stay in the chat. If you've got specific questions, pop over into the, the Q&A box, and then we'll go through those. We'll have 15, 20 minutes here at the end for some Q&A um, and any other comments that folks have. What I do want to spend a few moments talking about is a information technology management master's degree. You may decide that you... Um, maybe you want to pursue a certification, maybe you want to go to some more seminars, maybe you want to pursue an online master's degree. And I want to talk about um, a, a master's degree that I'm part of, but again, it's not to sell you on this master's degree. What I want to give you is a way of thinking about assessing master's degrees. So we're going to go through and I'm going to talk about the information technology management degree, but I'm going to talk about how I think about assessing it so that you can apply this to an MBA, you can apply this to any number of master's degrees. There are master's degrees in cybersecurity, there are master's degrees in data analytics. Um, this one's really focused on helping you move up into a leadership role. How do I move up in IT management? How do I become a leader? How do I become a director? How do I become a CIO if that's where my career aspirations lead me to? And so as I assess a master's degree, one of the first things I think you need to really assess are the program outcomes. You might have to look for this on some websites for our UW Extension, University of Wisconsin Extension, our online degrees really highlight those program outcomes. Those program outcomes that 
when you complete the degree, I took all these courses, but this is really what I learned. These were the themes that I heard throughout the program. These were the themes and learnings I have that really came across a number of different courses. And so for us, the MS Information Technology Management Program, we look at these seven specific outcomes, financial analysis, develop and managing technology budgets. This is one of the roles of a, of a, of a manager, of a leader in IT is to think about budgeting and understand some basic financial aspects of running the organization, running the IT organization. Leading and managing technology functions, projects and personnel, demonstrate effective collaboration and soft skills appropriate for technology settings. Now, most BAs get that. Right? Our job is really translating those requirements between the business users and our technology uh, back, back of the office. And, and how do I translate those requirements back and forth? Most of us are pretty good communicators in that role. But this program is still going to help grow those collaboration skills, grow those soft skills. We're going to have some managing of security, compliance, accounting, um, ethical implications. We're going to investigate and plan innovative solutions for business challenges. And we're going to engineer, develop, and deploy strategies for enterprise systems. Those are kind of the things that are baked into the program. And so as you're thinking about a master's degree program, don't just look at the courses. Don't just read the slick brochures. What are they trying to achieve? Right At the end of the day, you should be able to walk into your next interview when you're applying for a management role and talk about, these are the six things I got out of my out of my program. Yeah, I took these 30 credits or 36 credits, um, but the, this is really what I learned. These are the six things I wanna hang my hat on and really emphasize. The next thing I look at are the actual courses. What are those courses that I have to take? Do they build me into a better IT person in the direction of the career that I wanna move forward into? Communication? leading the IT function, finance for IT managers, data science, cloud computing and enterprise, um, business analysis and systems development. I'm gonna talk about that course. That's the course that I teach in the program. IT operations, IT governor, governance, ethics, regulatory compliance, evaluation of emerging technologies, big topic nowadays, and a capstone preparation and capstone project. Um, this series of courses, again, really designed to meet these six program outcomes and really help individuals both in the business and in IT get ready to move into a, an IT leadership role. And I think this is especially as I've worked with so many BAs over the last um, couple of years, I've been teaching in the master's level program. I find people who come into my class they have BA skills, they have IT skills, and they're exposed to new frameworks that they can start applying right now in their jobs. Um, read it in the book, talk about it in the class, write a paper on it, and I'm using it in my workforce right now. That's the real value of a master's degree, learning and applying different frameworks to help you think outside of your pillar that you're in, our IT pillar, and help you move up that pillar, help you move up in the IT um, pillar. So I wanna just burrow into a specific class that, um, that I teach right now for the program, business analysis and system development. And so I chose two um, business focused books. These aren't textbooks is these aren't the $300 textbooks that you remember from um, your first year of college. Um, these are um, practitioners who have done years and years and years of training that have written books on how to actually use BA in the real world uh, is the first book. And the other book is on leadership. Uh, we look at leadership both among yourself, your, your own self-leadership, kind of what we're talking about here. We talk about leadership on the project, leadership within the organization, and leadership uh, outside of work, kind of the leadership in the world. Um, it's a really neat way of looking at leadership. So we spend a little time on that in, in, in my course. Um, there are uh, 15 weeks in the program, approximately 15 weeks. We go through, again, there's not a test on this later, but we go through a lot of the BA work. A lot of the understanding BA, understanding stakeholders, thinking about business context, um, setting um, initiative scope, 
defining requirements, designing requirements, scope management, evaluating solution, and then a, a module on those leadership aspects. In the course, we each week we are involved with discussions. So what's an online course look like for those that haven't had it? Um, there is some reading. There are, for some of us, we do lecture videos. I don't do lecture videos. I believe through reading the book, through our online discussions, through, we do have some video interactions through a, a couple of different tools that we use um, where we are able to record videos and respond to record recorded videos the way of kind of kind of having a bit of interaction and a bit of seeing people you're in the class with that students really enjoy. Um, we are doing individual assignments. We're doing a lot of team assignments and we're doing a lot of reflections. And so this is a great way of, of thinking about the material working with the material, working with fellow classmates on the material, reflecting on the material. And then what I see day in and day out is folks reflecting on, my goodness, I didn't know about this particular tool. I'm gonna to grab that tool, pull it into work, my workforce, and here's what I did. I'm on a project, I used it right now. And there's just nothing more exciting about that as a, as a professor, um, as an instructor, to see your students walk out using the stuff Here's the actual thing you can do and actually walking out and using it. We're not just talking theory. This isn't theoretical. This is actual hands-on frameworks that can be used. Again, we'll get to questions here in just another minute or two. So as you have questions about the program, about how to assess and think about um, undergraduate or graduate level programs that you might be considering, drop those into the Q&A um, as well. And so your specific next steps, your specific call to action is to go through this cycle, understand, evaluate, plan, act, and then, and then review. Go through this cycle, decide and plan the action steps you want to take, act on those steps, act on those specific steps. You may decide you wanna look at some specific courses um, so the, I, I pulled out the courses we're offering in the fall. And so these are courses you could sign up and apply and register for relatively soon. Um, we got a closing date over the next month or so. Uh, registration opens in a couple of weeks. And these are, these are courses you could, you could jump into. There are a few prerequisites. You can't start with the capstone, obviously. Um, but those first couple of courses you could, you could look at jumping into. And then these are courses, the other courses that are offered during the fall. So a pretty extensive list. My business analysis course is there as well in the fall. So um, let's open it up for some questions. Uh, Mariah, do you want to ping me with some of the questions? Yeah, for sure. We've got a lot in chat. And just a reminder for anybody who'd like to ask the question, even if we can't get to it during the chat, we'll send it in an email afterwards. So our first question from Vikram. Industry trends to treat all BAs in one bucket as project BA. How do we generate awareness around the role of enterprise business analyst? Yeah, that's a, that's a great, um, you know, I think you know, when we talk about industry trends, right, when we're reading generalized articles, um, I think there is a, a tendency to say the BA. And yet when I look at even if I look at all the jobs my information system students out of UW Oshkosh undergraduate college business go forth into the world and do, I see cybersecurity analysts, I see financial controls analysts, I see um, process analysts, I see systems analysts, I see systems development analysts, right? They always have some unique thing and then analyst or analysis. And so when we look at industry trends that talk about BA in general, um, I think that's interesting. I think, again, what we can control, what we control is what we're doing at our company and how we're positioning our BA, our BA skills, our BA expertise within our company. Um, so again, we don't necessarily have a lot of control over how the industry is treating us. I take those as kind of a, that's interesting. These are some trends that are happening I need to be aware of. Um, but I recognize my situation is pretty unique. So I'm going to be kind of elusive on that answer because um, we, we can't, I, I don't try to control what I can't control. And I clearly can't control how, you know, the industry is approaching BA. I think they're giving some very, you know, when I'm writing an article as an industry expert, I don't. But if I were, 
I'm going to make those very generalized, very generalizable that won't work for every BA, but will provide some overview. So, you know, as with anything, you know, you've got to take what you can out of these articles, out of these trends. What can you take and apply out of these trends um, into my own work? And um, that would be my, my best advice for you. Thanks for the question. Great answer, John. Um, another question from Elizabeth. Uh, any career or life advice for those very early in their BA career? It'll be in my two years in June. Great question. Great question, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you. Um, and congratulations on choosing to work in IES. It's a very exciting field um, with lots of opportunity. Um, and I think I've said for a long time, especially now, there's so much going on in IT. Um, look, career advice, life, uh, life advice, career advice. Um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time with my, my graduates um, from my undergraduate uh, courses that I teach because I'm in person with them. I get to know these students really well. And um, they come back to me every couple of years, one or two years after they graduate, they come back and we talk about, you know, they've been at a job and they're ready to move into a different job. They've been in a job and they're ready to start a master's degree program. And so we have, we have these types of discussions. And I think at a, at a very high level, um, I encourage them to have fun at what they're doing. Um, my biggest advice in learning is that, look, we spend a lot of time working, whether it's at home, remote, or in an office, we spend a lot of time working. You should enjoy what you're doing. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, you should find something you enjoy doing. That, not, that doesn't necessarily mean going to sell cotton candy at a carnival, but it means within the IS space, find work that you find meaning out of, find work that you can control and have fun with. Um, and so that'd be my, my first order is find an organization you're comfortable with, find people you want to work with day in and day out. And as we've been talking about here, Elizabeth, what can I do to take control of my career? Two years out is a great time to start thinking about a master's degree. Two years out is a great time to add a certification and grow my career because you want to start thinking at two years, where, where am I going to be at the five-year mark? Where am I going to be in three more years? So I'm five years after my degree and five years in, as a professional IS person. It's time to start moving up in the organization. It's time to start moving around in the different areas of the organization. It's time to think about those certifications. It's time to think about maybe starting a master's degree. And you can do both of those or either of those. You don't have to do them both. You can, but you can do them slowly. Master's degree isn't take 22 classes and be done in a year. A master's degree is take one or two classes a semester and learn it apply it, try to get some, maybe you work in an organization that does tuition reimbursement. Um, can I can I take a class a semester or one or two classes a year and have part or all of that paid for? And now I'm growing my skill set, I'm growing my network, I'm learning more that I can apply into my job to making myself more valuable. And through that, you should be getting more challenging projects. Through that, you should be gaining more income. Through that, you should be considering new opportunities within and without outside of your current organization. Best of luck to you, Elizabeth, and others that are in the same kind of situation. Thanks, John. I'm sure a lot of people just kind of earlier in their career have had similar questions. So I'm, it's very valuable for everybody on the call right now. Moving into our next question from Shirash, uh, which adds more value, an executive part-time MBA or executive certificate program in a specialization or area? So I spent a lot of time consulting and um, was paid very well to consult. And I learned one answer. The more often you can say the following sentence, the more you can charge per hour consulting. It depends, right? It depends. <laughs> more, uh, sorry, the more sorry. I can say that, um, the higher I can charge. And the truth is it does depend. And so your situation, your goals, your desires, where you are in your career, there's the right path for you. There, and there's not a perfect path. You could look at two or three paths and, and all three are going to be equally desirable, equally time consuming and resource intensive, equally expensive, equally rewarding. And it's a matter of choosing one and moving down that particular path. Now, specifically, you were asking about, um, can you say that again, Mariah, on, uh, on the question? Um, let me see, I'm just gonna find it again. 
which adds more value an executive part-time MBA or executive certificate program in a specialization or area? Yeah. So again, it's a very intriguing question because there's so many educational opportunities. So many organizations are offering certifications now. You can go get a master's degree certification. And I look at by the certifications as, as, as I've seen them offered really is about like in at UW Oshkosh, we have some certifications. You can get a master's degree certification in data analytics. So people who really want to extend their career and experience in the data analytics world can take classes focused on moving forward. It's a certification. It's three, four classes. You can get a certification relatively quickly, get moving in that path. I could also get a master's degree in data analytics, for example. So um, the answer is it really depends. Uh, certification is quicker. It's typically cheaper. Um, and yet a master's degree or an executive level program or a master's degree like we're talking about here in the information technology management program is a longer term investment in yourself that will set you up for longer term roles and to move in the, into different roles over time. So the answer is, it depends. I, I think that speaks to another question that came shortly after from Nicholas. Is it a must to have a BA certification? I'm in a leadership position and don't have a full certification, but I have hands-on skills, some BCS, and I use podcasts and IABA theory. So I think what a certification does is it gives you a credential. And, and I, that's, a de that's a definitional answer. You have a credential. But it credentials you with your coworkers. It credentials you with other BAs. It credentials you with leadership. I think having a professional certification shows you know the language, you know the um, processes, you know the frameworks, and have proven that you know those, that you know the lexicon, the language. Um, I think that's important. And then I think a certification is a great place to start. It sounds like in your role, maybe you've got a, 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 a frontline leadership type of role. You know, a master's in leadership is another great way of moving that career forward. But I think a certification is a great place to start, especially the IIBA, BA certifications, especially if you're in a BA role or leading and working with BAs. Um, that's going to give you a credential, um, that certification that then you can use to encourage others around you to also pursue. I think it's very important. So for our next question from Terrace, should systems training and strategy be part of the BA skill set since we are so close to both systems and business processes? Yes. And I, I know strategy is. I'm not sure on the um, systems thinking, though that's one of the skills you'd certainly want to have an understanding of. So yes, I think both of those are, are closely related skills for a BA to have and important to have. And something that if you have, you should be highlighting on your LinkedIn and resume. And if there's skills you don't have, you should be looking at opportunities to, um, to learn those. Look, you're, you're never too old. You never have learned too much that you can't take new certifications and new classes. Look, I'm Dr. John Moraski. I have two master's degrees and a doctorate um, in, in you know, 40 years of going to school. I just finished a certification on um, future foresight strategic planning through the University of Houston. I'm enrolling into a certification class for design thinking, because while I've taught it, I actually want to get the certification in design thinking. And next year in my personal plan, I plan to get a change management certification, um, professional certification. So, you know, you're, you're never too old, you're never at the, the wrong time to earn a professional certification, to go through that coursework, to go through the experience of earning that and being able to apply it in your work for, in your workplace in your job. Thank you. I'll move us to the next question um, from Sukiana. A lot of organizations, including mine, don't provide a lot of growth opportunities for the title business analysts unless BAs move into one of other business roles or IT roles. Thoughts? Yeah, uh, how do you show value in, in what you're doing? Um, I think we're entering a pretty good, you know, it's a pretty good economy right now to, to try to make that just try to make that justification. In other words, companies are in dire needs for IT employees. They don't want to lose you. Um, they're probably willing to throw money at you right now. They're probably willing to pay you more if you were to, to push it. They're probably willing to, if you approach it um, appropriately, they're probably willing to pay to train you. 
whether that's a certification program to go through, whether that's starting your master's degree program, um, they're probably willing to do that to keep you. Your job will be working with your leader to show that what you're doing is of value. Um, and that's going to be have to be part of your, as you chart your career, as you look at how do I move from what I'm doing now into where I want to be, you know, if you want to stay as a BA, and that's a perfectly acceptable thing to do, then help them understand the value of what you're doing. You have to show your value, no matter what our job is, we have to show that we had value, or honestly, we shouldn't be in the role, the role shouldn't exist. So we have to show the value we, we're, we're providing. We have to show the value of the role. We have to show that we're uniquely qualified for that role. And so that you're not seeking training to do your job, right? You're seeking training and certification to do your job better. You're seeking training and certification to add additional value to the organization. If you go back to that slide, I'm not going to jump to it now, um, where I showed you know, ways to add value to an organization. If you can show that through this training, through this master's degree, you're going to be able to better add value to the organization and that you're seeing the industry trends right now of encouraging training and personal development and having organizations pay for that, that that's going to be something you're going to expect from, from your employer. Having those honest discussions, um, I think, may pave the way, may lead the way to um, what you're looking for. Um, there's a book and there's, a, there's a, um, an approach called Crucial Conversations. Crucial Conversations, I don't have a link, but you can, you can just Google this. Crucial Conversations. It's about having those tough conversations, tough conversations at work, tough conversations in your individual and personal life. But how do you approach something where you're trying to make your point, you're trying to understand the, the other person's point of view. Um, it sounds like you have to have a crucial conversation with your um, your boss, your leader, on um, what you're trying to seek and, and what you're hoping to get. I hope that helps. I'm sure it was. Uh, for Elio next, do you agree that we should think on business analysis as a discipline that could fit in different roles? Uh, in my case, I'm trying to push to get more product ownership responsibilities on the most experienced BAs. Yeah, oh my goodness. You know, I look at, um, and again, I'm, I'm looking from a pretty high view here as I've worked with so many different organizations, so many different leaders, so many different people. Um, thanks for the shout out on Crucial Conversations. I see that struck, uh, that resonates with a number of people. Um, but if I look at, um, you know, folks I've, I've coached and mentored and helped, um, they're typically project managers or business analysts. And both of those types of people, and, and again, there's a pretty good Venn diagram between BA and, and, and PM, um, IIBA and PMI might argue with me, but I think there's a good, a good overlap between those skill sets. You are equipped to move into so many different roles. Those BA skills, those PM skills will serve you in product ownership, in process ownership, in people leadership, in whatever role it is you want to go to. So I think, you know, conversely, could a BA do any of those roles? I think it's more important to get people in those roles better trained as BAs, because everyone in IT is a BA to some extent. Every IT professional is ought to be a business analyst at their heart. And so a way of flipping that question on its head is not can BA move into those roles, but how do we ensure people in those roles have good foundational BA skills? Because they're so important. I hope that helps you um, think about that question a little bit. I think that was a great question to end on. We only have two minutes left. So would you like to take maybe one more question or yeah. would you like to kind of close things off? Let's do one more question, then we'll close up. Fantastic. So because it's from an anonymous attendee and we won't be able to follow up with them. Um, I'm interested in pursuing a role as a BA, but I wonder whether I should consider pursuing the future trend roles now, i.e. cybersecurity, project management, et cetera. What are your thoughts? Again, great question. Great question to wrap up on. Look, as I'm looking at charting my career and business analyst, IT leader, you're asking kind of where should I go in the IT world? Um, as I stated with, with my last comment, every IT person must at heart be a BA. Every IT person must at heart be a project manager. If you have those basic skill sets, you can go anywhere. You then can choose the certifications you want. You then can choose the master's degree you want. 
And so let me wrap up here in our last minute. Again, thank you for the questions. Thank you. I wasn't able to keep up with all the dialogue, but I appreciate all the discussion going on. Um, you can't control what's going on in the world around you, but you can control your response to it. And that really led me into developing this charting your career, taking ownership, responsibility, and understanding where you are, where you've been, where you want to be, understanding your strengths, your skills, your experiences, and translating that into a map to move yourself forward. Have a plan, build a plan, execute the plan. Um, and I think that is a core BA skill that we now just hold up the mirror and we apply it to ourselves and our own career and our own path forward. Please connect with me on um, LinkedIn. Um, and again, I would love to hear, um, I would love to hear any stories you have, any successes you have um, on charting your own, own career. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you at our next webinar. Take care.